Hello, welcome to another Sonic Lab. Today we're looking at the Studio Electronics Boomstar module. Specifically, we're looking at the oscillation, which is the oscillator, unsurprisingly, component of the Boomstar Rain. Now, it's a fairly simple, it's a 16 HP, I guess that makes it about three of your normal uh, width modules. It's a multi-wave oscillator. As with a lot of oscillator modules, allows you to access the individual waves, but it does it in a slightly different way. So what we have here, if we start off on the top left, we've got the uh, coarse tune, then we've got the pulse width CV in, and the FM modulation, frequency modulation in. Then this switch here gives us the uh, range of the oscillator. So we've got normal and then low frequency if we want to use it like an LFO. Then we've got a fine tune, which sounds like it's about plus or minus two semitones. Then we've got the pulse width setting for the square wave. And finally, the sub level here. These four switches switch in and out the individual waveforms. So they allow us to actually create a mix as well as having the waveform out on individual outputs. These are switched in and out to the mix, the, the main mix out, which is what I'm using here. The outputs here of the individual waves are not affected by any of these switches. So one of the things that Studio Electronics, Electronics say about the oscillation is it's got a heck of a lot of stability in the shape of the waveform, uh, even down to very low frequencies. So I guess we just have to test that, right? So I'll bring my little scope window up here. We'll start with the sine wave. Obviously, I can play this via the keyboard. Uh, the input, incidentally, is volt per octave, which is a standard Eurorack uh, method of getting uh, voltage control. We take this right down. We can see, you're probably not going to hear this anymore, but the waveform has a, a really quite a beautiful shape all the way down. Bring that back up again. Switch that waveform out, because we're, again, we're coming out of the mix. Let's try the triangle. Again, we've got a lovely shape. Right down into LFO. We're not even in LFO mode. If we go into LFO mode, I'll save that for another waveform to be easier to see. Sawtooth. Let's see how far up we can go with these. We go right the way up. I'm at about. I can still hear that. Now it's starting to go supersonic. I can't hear it, but again, we come right down. We switch into low frequency mode. You can hear we're getting down into the fractions of hertz per second. So we can use it as an LFO. While we're here, we'll listen to the square wave. Again, standard. The pulse width is really, really wide range. Some waveforms limited, but this is going from almost to disappearing at either end of the scale, positive and negative amounts. Now, of course, you'll be delighted to hear that uh, we can obviously modulate the pulse width. I've got a cable here. If I just bring this out, I've got the Intelligent Atlantis uh, LFO. I'll bring that into the pulse width modulation input because we can modulate the pulse width we can have a sync input as well which allows us to sync the oscillators if we've got more than one and a frequency modulation in so let's just switch the square wave on bring the depth up there we go from nice subtle if we can have a look at that on the Nice subtle modulation to really, really extreme stuff. We can take the oscillator right up into audio rates, the LFO. The only thing you will notice here is actually quite hard on this. There's no, because this goes into positive and negative, it's quite hard to set it to naught. So if I. can't really do it, I have to do it by ear. Doesn't seem to be a point, whereas if I, if I unplug it, 
then we're sorted. And that's the same for the frequency modulation as well. There's no center dent, so it's actually quite hard to dial none in. You sort of have to unplug it, or maybe if there's an atten attenuate the signal coming in elsewhere. Now if we come back to the FM, we can use the same input to the frequency modulation. And let's do a sine wave and dial in. Oops, that's not it, that's it here, FM in. I could dial in small amounts. It's actually quite finickety. I mean, there's hardly any, this range, the sort of small, if you just wanted modulation, it all happens in a tiny amount of travel. So the scaling to my ears could have been a little bit different so that we had a bit more range or less range in the, you know, the first 10% 10, 10 travel on the pot. Anyway, we can bring this right up. Again, into all kinds of FM stuff. So now if I bring the waveform up, you can see the, the waveform's going crazy. So I'm modulating this really high rate here. So if we take maybe this, the oscillator up really high. We can start to do some interesting uh, FM kind of uh, oscilloscope art. So you can see we've got a very wide range of modulation there. I mean, the only problem is if you want a very small amount of modulation, it's quite hard to dial it in on the front panel there. Uh, we should also take a listen to the sub oscillator because there's a separate sub out. Let's take the FM out. Let me bring this down, have a look at the waveform for the sub oscillator. You can see that is really, really precise and square. Um, interestingly, the pulse width only does seem to do something, but only at the very extreme travel, amount of travel. I'm not sure what's going on there. That sounds a little bit... I don't know whether that's supposed to do that or it's not supposed to do that. But a full positive pulse width, it, it creates... I, I guess that looks like a kind of, I don't know, 5 or 10% pulse width sub-oscillator. So we could have... Let's see if we bring that up a bit. Start adding the impulse, the sub oscillator to the wave. Some crazy stuff happens. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, or whether it's or whether it's supposed to be doing that. I've actually spoken to uh, Studio Electronics and they say that there is actually a new revision. This is one of the very few that made it into the UK before they revised it. They put a little cap capacitor in uh, normal speak into the system which allows you to modulate the pulse width very widely without affecting the sub. So do watch out for that if you're buying one of these units and you don't want that behavior. But overall, very nice sounding oscillator, nice wide range, very clean waveforms, and the amount of FM that you can get in there right up into the audio rates if you've got something to send it to is jolly nice. Obviously, the sound of those waves is going to be a little buzzier than perhaps you're used to hearing on a dedicated synth module where it's going to be going through a filter. Even wide open, it's probably going to tame some of those high frequency buzzes, but it's good to have all of that there if you're going to use it in a system. As far as the price goes, uh, it's about 229 UK pounds for the oscillation. I mean, that is at the higher end of the oscillator market, but it is a premium oscillator and um, you know, if you've heard these things before, certainly when you start putting them into voices, they really do have a lot more kind of beef and weight. So that's the oscillation from Boomstar. Thanks for watching.